This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. And I'm Sadie Yuck. And we're sisters here to tell you about murder. Uh, specifically, a really awful murder. This is a continuation of last week's episode about the murder of Garnet Spears. So if you haven't heard uh, part one of this episode, uh, go back and listen to that now because you're going to be hella confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We start like right right away just getting real awful so go build up to this moment <laughs> yeah yeah start in the shallow end of the pool and wait up to horrible where we currently are yes. um and join us in the nightmare that is munchausen's by proxy um yeah in the meantime i just want to say guys go home self-isolate not enough of you are doing it i'm sure by the time you hear this you will be doing more of it because you'll have no choice but to do it but we are going to be okay. I repeat, we are going to be okay. If you get your asses home, get on the couch, get comfy, fire up a podcast. Mm-hmm. Don't go to the bar. Stop going to the bar. The end. It's yep. easy. Yep. The bars will be there in two months when we can all go back and get hella shit-faced. <laughs> <laughs> the quicker you go home and stop going to the bars, the quicker you can go back to the bars. So. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Uh, please, please do us all a favor and go home and turn on this podcast. And with all that said, take it away, Sadie. Thanks. Um, so when we left off in part one, we were talking about how uh, Garnet had been feeling ill, according to Lacey, for a few days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and things seemed to be ramping up. A uh, friend stopped by the apartment to visit with them and noticed that Garnet was suffering from bad headaches and seemed lethargic. Um, she also noticed that his feeding machine was set up with a feeding bag full of a milk colored liquid. Mm-hmm. Um, and she suggested that Lacey bring Garnet to the hospital, uh, asked if she needed a ride and Lacey said she'd call someone to get a car. So a little later, Lacey made a frantic call to her friend. Uh, her friend's name was Una She was screaming that Garnet was having seizures and needed a car immediately to go to the hospital. Instead of rushing off to the hospital, Lacey casually dropped Una off at her house and then stopped in to see another friend and brought, yeah, and brought Garnet in with her. Oh no. (laughs) Yeah. Her friend thought they were stopping by to play and was surprised when Lacey told her they were on their way to the hospital. What the f- Yeah. And I know that Una had also said that, you know, based off the phone call, she was expecting an emergency because Lacey was so upset. And when she got there, she was honking the horn and like, I'm here, I'm here. Let's go. Let's go. And Lacey didn't come out. So she finally went into the house and Lacey was just like casually packing a bag and Garnet didn't seem to be feeling well, but he didn't seem to be like in a state of an an emergency um, state. But so it just seemed really odd. And I know that Una also had suggested, how about I just drive you to the hospital? And Lacey was like, no, I'll drop you off and then go. Yeah. So just really yeah, strange. That's really strange. If I'm going to be late for a movie, I'm not dropping you off at home, let alone like I'm having a, my son's having a medical emergency. Right. <laughs> Got to get to the hospital. You don't yeah. need to pack a bag. Um, so sh- the friend that they stopped by to see said that Lacey seemed very passive. Finally, once they got on the way to the hospital, Lacey decides to pull over and take a picture of Garnet sitting in his car seat. Oh, my God. She posts this picture on Facebook and sends a few texts to friends telling them Garnet is very ill and that they were at the hospital. I really wish I could touch my face right now because I really just want to, like, press my head into my (laughs) hands so hard. You know what I mean? Uh Yes. I'm, like, having a full body reaction to this woman. Yeah, it's infuriating, infuriating, infuriating. Yeah. Uh, When they finally arrive at the hospital, a nurse assesses Garnet. She notices his hands are trembling, but his vitals are all normal. Lacey tells the nurse that he has suffered three seizures that day. Uh, When Dr. Kevin McSherry, the pediatric emergency room doctor, 
comes to examine Garnet, he notices how eager Lacey is to share Garnet's medical history. Mm-hmm. While she's talking, the doctor observed Garnet trying to vomit, oh, no. uh, which he couldn't do because of uh, the procedure he had, that oh. operation. I'm a very claustrophobic person, and that's one of the most claustrophobic things I can imagine. Yeah. Not being able to expel vomit. something from your body mm-hmm. that needs to be expelled. No. So Dr. McSherry said about, quote, about three or four times during the interview with his mom, he would arch his back and make sort of a gagging sound uh, like he was going to vomit. Mm -hmm. So he decides to admit Garnet for observation and to perform an EEG to determine whether he was having seizures. Mm -hmm. Uh, They would attach the electrodes to Garnet's scalp to record his brain waves and position a video camera on him so doctors could see what was happening to him uh, to see if there was any seizure activity Mm -hmm. when briefing uh, the new doctor dr sunku who would be officially admitting garnet um, so we're going from the er to where he'll be staying at the hospital Mm -hmm. he warned her that he did not believe Lacey's stories and suspected she might be suffering munchausen syndrome by proxy wow i mean good for him he picked up on it right away (laughs) seriously good for him but it's like the you know 200th person that's been like this Something's seriously wrong with this woman. And everyone's like, okay, Mm -hmm. (laughs) hope somebody does something about that eventually. Uh, They did blood work and started an IV on Garnet. Lacey took pictures of the IV and posted it on Facebook. His blood work came back normal. Um, His sodium level was 138 and his chloride was 105. I'm assuming that's bad. No, that's fine. That was normal. Okay. Oh, Just okay. keep that in mind. Yep. Got uh, it. So sodium level was 138 and chloride was 105. Okay, cool. Uh, Garnet's first night in the hospital was uneventful. He was happy to be in a room with a television. Uh, they said that he, like, that was his number one <laughs> mm-hmm. best thing. You know, I don't yeah. think the Waldorf community had a lot of TVs available. Um, his video EEG was set up. It had both video and audio capabilities, but the technician had not properly connected the sound cable, so there would be no audio. Mm-hmm. Um, Saturday morning, January 18th, Garnet was observed to be in good spirits. He was awake, chatty, and appeared healthy. There was no seizure activity on the EEG from the previous night. They continued to monitor, monitor him through the day. Um, as evening approached, the nurse began to prepare his overnight feed uh, of nutritional milk products, which he would get through his G-tube. Mm-hmm. She realized the hospital didn't have the right size connector tube for his Mickey button port. Um, she asked Lacey if she had one, and she did, so she gave it to the nurse. Oh, great. That night was uneventful as well. On Sunday the 19th, the nurse came in, disconnected his feeding tube, and closed up his port in his stomach. She flushed the connector tube and gave it back to Lacey. She reported that Garnet happily chatted away to her and seemed quite normal. At 9.08 a.m., Lacey began searching Google for information about iodized salt. Oh, no. Quote, what is iodized salt? Morton iodized salt, what is in it? She then made a series of searches on the central nervous system and abnormal brain activity. You know, normal mom Googling. Yeah, I mean, if I'm in the hospital... It's like, you know what I've always wondered? What is salt? <laughs> my kid my kid uh, might die, but it's time to get to the bottom of some of these things that keep me up at night. <laughs> it's like a insane clown posse song or something. <laughs> what are what is salt? What is what salt? are magnets? <laughs> I think I just gave myself a like existential panic attack thinking about what salt actually is. No. <laughs> yeah, so we don't need to. We don't need to send people down that road. <laughs> no, but if you find that what search <laughs> history on my phone tonight, uh, I won't assume that you're. I'm not going to start a Munchausen's people. I'm not going to Munchausen my wife. I promise, or my pugs. Uh, so soon after, Doctor uh, Sunku came in to examine Garnet. Everything seemed normal, and she told Lacey that they would keep him one more day if things stayed the way they were. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would be discharged the following morning. After the doctor left, the EEG camera captured Lacey bringing Garnet into the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to get dark here, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like this part at all. Uh, he looked happy, even grabbing a cookie on the way in. 
Seconds earlier, the boy had been gleefully kicking around on the bed and waving his hands while his mother sat with her arms folded, staring into space. Oh, God. After going into the bathroom, Lacey came out, went to her bag, and reappeared with Garnet's connector tube in one hand and a large cup in the other. Mm -hmm. They spent three minutes in the bathroom out of camera shot. When Lacey brought Garnet out of the bathroom, she put on put him on the bed. He looked lethargic and scared. Uh, Lacey went back into the bathroom and came out with the con connector tube and cup in her hand. She then checked that his Mickey button was closed. Poor kid. Um, for the next several minutes, Lacey waited for the salt to take effect, watching her son almost clinically. She picked up the red nurse call button, which was on the floor, and moved it to the bed in readiness. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, Garnet kneeled over and started to retch. He arched his back as he desperately tried to vomit. Oh, he God. couldn't... I know, I know. I've got like... No, it's you know. awful. Uh, he couldn't because uh, the operation he had. Lacey pressed the red call button and the nurse ran into the room and was horrified by what she saw. For the next 15 minutes, the boy rolled around on his bed in agony, clutching his head in pain, trying to throw up. Lacey sat next to him, rubbing his back. He was screaming and extremely agitated. It's like a level of horror that is really hard to comprehend, you know? I, no. I, it's, yeah. It's very upsetting. <laughs> yep. Um, Dr. Sunku came in, ordered medicine for the nausea and headache, and knew the only way that Garnet could purge whatever was in his system was through a bowel movement. Garnet then started having explosive diarrhea. The nurse hurried to clean him up. Uh, Dr. Sunku ordered more blood work to try and figure out what was happening to Garnet. While waiting for the results of the blood test, Lacey, Lacey posted a new photo of Garnet on Facebook saying, quote, Please, please send G some love. He went from fine to really sick in minutes. God. Blood work came back normal, and Garnet's condition had markedly improved. He continued to improve through the day. His only complaint was that he was very thirsty. Yeah, I bet. At 4.19 p.m., the EEG video shows Lacey bringing Garnet back into the bathroom with the cup and connector tube. I mean, again, I don't, I don't even know how to... It's seriously what nightmares are made of. Yeah. Like, this Didn't is your work. mother. Yeah. yeah. Your mother... Yeah. And she's doing this to you. And, you know, you, you know, he knows it at this point. That this mm -hmm. is just, he's caused she's causing him such serious harm and there's mm -hmm. nothing he can do about it. Right. Well, and then when I think about my five year old, he's so uh, sweet and innocent and willing to go along. I mean, he'd do anything yeah. I said and also smart enough to know when something isn't right. Absolutely. Um, and it, it's just when, heartbreaking. Yeah, it, yeah. Makes me want to vomit. Me too. So the process started all over again for Garnet, dry heaving, terrible headache. When the nurse came in to help, she noticed that this time his G-tube port was open. Just before 5.30 p.m., Garnet started having a full-blown seizure. Mm -hmm. The nurse called additional help into the room. Dr. Sunku administered strong anti-seizure medication, which only helped a little. Uh, Garnet's oxygen levels started to fall, and he began having trouble breathing. Mm-hmm. It got so bad that the doctor intubated Garnet and put him on life support. She also began making arrangements to transport him to a larger hospital who could better help the suddenly critically ill child. Mm -hmm. uh, during all this, Lacey was texting friends looking for sympathy. During a particularly terrible seizure, Lacey left the room to make a phone call. I, d I d like, <laughs> oh my God. It's, I mean, it's so, that condition is so powerful that it, in her case anyway, no concern at all mm -hmm. that people are going to think her behavior is weird, mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, obviously she's gotten away with it for all these years, but it's just, I don't know. I, I, I don't even, I can't begin to comprehend where that comes from. No, no. Uh, and when Lacey came back from her phone call, she started to request blood work uh, to check Garnet's sodium levels. What? Um, yeah, she just kept insisting that they should check again. She's trying to get busted? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think she's trying to get busted. I think maybe she just wants to have an ex like a reason for this. Right. You know, and um, in the book, they talk a lot about how when he was admitted in the first place, when going through the medical history, she kept mentioning how he had high sodium levels 
uh, like critically high sodium levels as an infant. Mm hmm. And uh, a lot of the doctors, when they heard the history, even said, like, the levels she was reporting were not compatible with life for an infant. Right. Um, so I I think that she maybe was hoping that um, because it happened to him when he was a baby and it mm-hmm. happened again, they would say, oh, he just had this random history of elevated sodium levels, which is that actually isn't something that happens. But I think that's what her thought was. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, oh, she should have done a little further research to find out that you just don't you just don't have sodium levels that spike oh, for no reason for no reason yeah our bodies don't work that way no uh, but that's my guess so yeah she requests that they draw his blood um so they do so and the results were astounding his sodium had jumped from 144 to 182 in less than four hours god um his chloride levels had jumped from 114 to 160 mm-hmm uh, when the doctor heard the results, she was stunned. There was no medical explanation for the levels to jump so quickly. Uh, when Dr. Sunku told Lacey the dangers Garnet faced with such high levels, she said that Lacey stood there with a smile on her face. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, Garnet was brought to Westchester Medical Center in Valhalla, New York, by helicopter. Uh, when the doctor came to examine Garnet, he became suspicious right away when he saw the boy's G- G-tube port. The other thing that I read about in the book was that when it was time to go in the helicopter, a friend had uh, shown up to support Lacey, and Lacey didn't want to get on the helicopter. She was like, no, no, I'll just get a ride. And the friend what? was like, you have to get on the helicopter with your child. Like, right now, you got to go. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, no, it's fine. But... She eventually talked her into going with him. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, it's fine. I'll call an Uber (laughs) to get to my critically ill son. Hospital. Uh, Yeah. yeah. So the doctor became suspicious right away when he saw the boy's G-tube port. It was the only explanation for how his sodium levels could rise so quickly. Mm Mm-hmm. He brought Lacey in to ask her about Garnet's medical history, and without prompting, Lacey got upset, saying that the doctor was accusing her her of hurting her child. Wow. The doctor came up with a careful plan to lower Garnet's sodium levels slowly over the next few days. He issued strict orders that he receive no food or water by mouth or through his G-tube. Giving Garnet any food or water could kill him. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... And a little quick aside to that I read um, where they're talking about how if you tried to feed a child or anybody, if you tried to feed somebody a teaspoon of salt by mouth, your body would immediately reject it. It's just not possible. You could, you'd oh, spit wow. it out. You can't, your body can't take in that salt. It's so overpowering. Wow. Um, so you wouldn't even be able to swallow it. Cool. And so it, I don't know exactly how much it would take to kill somebody, but it's not a lot. We're not talking about a whole lot of salt. Totally. Um, to overwhelm your system. Wow. On Monday, January 20th, Garnet remained in a coma and on life support, but was starting to show signs of recovery. His sodium levels were dropping slowly as planned. By early afternoon, Garnet started waking up and was breathing on his own. He was out of immediate danger, but the order of no food or water by mouth remained, and that danger stayed in place. Um, you know, the, the it's such a delicate balance that if they overwhelm his system with something new, it, it could yeah. still kill him, even though he was getting better. Totally. Uh, Garnet had a restful night and was really improving every hour. Lacey's Facebook posts told a different story, saying that Garnet was screaming in pain and that he'd blown two IVs, but none of that was true. God. By Tuesday morning, the 21st, Garnet's blood work was back to normal. At 7.15 a.m., Dr. Glotzman walked by Garnet's room and observed he was sleeping comfortably. He was stable. He had no concerns. A few minutes later, an alarm went off in the boy's room, signaling an emergency. The doctor ran into Garnet's room and saw Lacey leaning over the bed. He saw a water bottle under the bed and ordered a nurse to grab the, the bottle. Good. He already had suspicions that Lacey had fed her son salt, and now he wondered if she had gave, if she gave him water, which would cause irreversible brain damage. Why was she in there with him alone? It's just like, why was she in there with him alone? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. At this point, there's just no excuse for that. I can't. Usually, I'm like, oh, I understand, but this, like. 
A poor kid. Yeah. Makes me so sad and so mad. Well, and his body was trying so hard. You know, he kept improving. Yeah. And she just kept going back. It's... <laughs> no. I just can't. Yeah. There's zero There's no reason words. for that kid to have died or no. have gotten sick, right. even. Right. So the doctor ordered Lacey out of the room. Uh, Garnet had stopped breathing. While the doctors fought to save her son, Lacey, Lacey was busy texting friends and posting on Facebook, uh, looking for sympathy. When a friend came to support Lacey, she said that Lacey was more concerned that she was under suspicion than she was about Garnet. Of course. A brain scan was performed, and it revealed that Garnet was brain dead. The high concentration of salt in his body had shifted water to his brain cells, which mm. caused them to swell. Uh, the pressure was too much and crushed the vital centers of his brain that con that control respiration and blood pressure. Poor baby. Uh, there was nothing the doctors could do to save Garnet. Mm -hmm. While the family were saying their goodbyes, the hospital staff were quietly alerting the authorities to what had happened to the boy. Westchester County Police, which is where the hospital was, started an investigation right away, and they worked really closely with the Rampo, Ramapo, sorry. They worked really closely with the Ramapo Police Station, uh, and they were the ones that resided over the town that Lacey and Garnet lived in. Mm -hmm. The doctor handed over the water bottle he found under, under Garnet's bed. While waiting for Garnet to officially be declared brain dead, which um, I guess can take a few days. Wow. Lacey would take pictures of him on life support and post them on Facebook. I mean, once again, why is she still in the room with her kid? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, at this point, irreversible damage has been done, but I don't get it. Mm -hmm. I, it's like... I think it, they were they were waiting for proof, you know. Yeah, at totally. At this point, nobody had seen her do anything I to know. him. Except um, for, and also like, the... throughout his entire life. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but it was different <laughs> yes. people, which I get. But it's yeah, just... and, and I don't think even those people, they would see things here or there, but nothing concrete. God. Um, but uh, it, I think the other good part about being quiet is that she wasn't alerted yet, so she, she wasn't going to start trying to cover her tracks. Right. Um, so it allowed the police to start working. Yep. Um, so, yeah, these pictures... So she was, her son was on life support dying and she was taking pictures of him and posting it on Facebook, which I cannot no. imagine. No. It's, it's a horrifying. And this really shocked her friends and family. They couldn't believe that she was doing that. No, it's so horrifying. My dog died a couple of years ago and it took me like a week to post anything about it because I was too sad. You know? Right. And you didn't take pictures of him being euthanized. No. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, it's disgusting. So on January 23rd, 2014, at 10.20 a.m., Garnet is officially declared brain dead. Two minutes later, Lacey posted a photo of Garnet on Facebook saying, quote, Garnet the Great journeyed onward today at 10.20 a.m. I mean, there's just, I'm out of reactions to her. I know. You know. I know. I, I think we're all feeling it. <laughs> She's such a fucking monster. Yeah. And really the only silver lining, there is none really, but Garnet was able to donate his heart, liver, kidneys, and spleen to people who needed them. Oh, sweet pie. So the Ramapo police detectives, uh, Kurt Budnick <laughs> and Dennis Proctor, yep. uh, carried out a search warrant for Lacey Spears' apartment. Um, so Lacey was still in the hospital at this point, mm -hmm. and uh, so they went ahead and got a search warrant. Real quick, which is yep. so smart. So smart. Thank God. Uh, they were looking for sodium, salt, and different medications. Right away, the detectives noticed Garnet's feeding machine with a feeding bag full of white liquid hanging from the IV pole. Yep. They walked into the kitchen and stopped in their tracks. On the kitchen table, Lacey had made a shrine. It consisted of a photo of Garnet, candles, some medication, and a large box of sea salt. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. There's pictures of that, too, that I'll post. What on earth? They found another feeding bag containing the white liquid in the garbage. On the way out, they discussed taking the feeding bags, uh, but decided against it. Mm -hmm. They thought it was full of breast milk. They took pictures of it, but left it behind. Okay, cops. All the cops that are listening, always take it. Take it all. Yes. <laughs> Every single thing. 
Yeah. That's... And if you're suspecting that she's poisoning him through his G-tube, you take the fucking yeah. beating bags. I yeah. Mean... Don't be embarrassed about breast milk, guys. It's okay. Yeah. Right. Well, and I don't, I just like, I don't, I don't know. When I was reading that part in the book, I was like, you, you have to be kidding me. Have to be kidding me. Even if it's breast milk, you take it and you test it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh... Take everything out of the fridge. Take everything. Yes. Uh, so while waiting for Garnet to die, Lacey called a friend from the fellowship and asked her re- to remove the feeding bag from the apartment mm-hmm. and throw it away and not to tell anyone. Uh, this made her friend nervous, so she called another friend and asked her to help. <laughs> they made their way to Lacey's apartment. Lacey's upstairs neighbor told them that the police had been there and that they shouldn't take anything out of the apartment or go inside at all. Despite this, they went in and took the feeding bag. Uh, they put it inside another bigger garbage bag. Good. Uh, her friend then took it home with her. She decided not to throw it away, thank God. Thank uh, God. But put it in her closet for safekeeping. After thinking more about it and feeling increasingly uncomfortable with Lacey's request, she told the leaders of the fellowship what happened, and they called authorities and turned over the feeding bag. Good. The leaders of the fellowship told the police what Lacey had asked her friends to do, uh, the feeding bag and other feeding equipment found in her apartment was sent to the police lab for testing. Good. Both feeding bags were found to have very high concentrations of sodium inside. Of course they did. Uh, while Garnet was still on life support, Lacey was interviewed by police. She would have her head down on the table sobbing one minute, and then the police would ask her a question, and she would pop up, stop crying, and answer the question calmly. God. She speculated that Garnet might have accidentally caused his own death by, quote, playing with the syringe used for GI feedings, and it was possible that he could have put something in the GI feeding tube. Yeah, sure. Um, So he also had made a comment that sometimes she would put a, quote, pinch of salt in the puree of his fruits and vegetables that she would give him through his feeding tube. Yeah. Because you know what? You need to flavor food that goes directly into the stomach. You don't taste with your mouth. You idiot. Yeah. Um, the policey. P- policey. <laughs> <laughs> I just need something to laugh at, I guess. I know. Like, it's it's a long awful. week. <laughs> uh, the police quick, quickly suspect Lacey is displaying distinct signs of Munchausen's, uh, Munchausen by proxy. The detectives made arrangements to subpoena all of Lacey's social media accounts as evidence. They also got a warrant to take her, uh, to take and search her phone, iPad, and laptop. Mm-hmm. Lacey had started deleting posts uh, to cover her tracks, and she also hired an attorney. Yeah, too late. Mm-hmm. It took weeks to physically extract all the data from her devices. They pulled two, 23,000 photos and videos. Wow. The extraction report would be almost 1,800 pages, um, and this is just from her phone, mm-hmm. and almost 50,000 pages from her various social media accounts. That is staggering. Yeah. It, it's. <laughs> I mean, on a global level, just thinking about all the quote-unquote pages of information that we all produce mm-hmm. all the time, that's just wild to think about on its own, but 50,000 pages Mm -hmm. 23,000 photos and videos on her phone alone oh man like yeah it's I don't even know how to wrap my mind around that and the kid's five years old right so an autopsy was performed on Garnet's body other than the swelling in his brain he was found to be healthy and normal Mm -hmm. there was no sign of disease in his stomach or intestines uh, so there was no sign of celiac or Crohn's disease um, which she had claimed that he had yep uh, it was determined that Garnet had died from hypernatremia caused by being fed sodium from an outside source, and manner of death was homicide. Good. I mean, not good that that was his manner of death, but good that that's what was determined. Determined, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the detectives went to interview Garnet's teacher, who is also a registered nurse. Uh, during their conversation, the teacher asked if they'd watch the video from his EEG machine. Mm -hmm. This was the first anyone had thought of the video, Uh, so the police rushed to get a subpoena for those tapes. So thank you very much. Seriously. (laughs) You smart, smart woman. Thank you for the, like, three smart people in this poor boy's life that 
kept the bag and thought of the EEG video. Yeah. The fact that the doctors didn't think of that, I just don't even... I mean, I, I can only imagine. They're probably yeah. very busy and overwhelmed. But, but you have a video on a kid that has just been murdered. So Yes. Anyway, thank God. Yes, thank God. The teacher. Uh, as the detective started to put the pieces of Garnet's life together, Lacey's web of lies began to unravel. Lacey moved in with her parents who lived in Kentucky. Uh, she was certain that the police inv- investigation would fizzle out and she would uh, move back to Florida and have another baby. <laughs> uh, once she replaced her phone, Lacey started posting to Facebook again. She shared graphic details of Garnet's death and how heartbroken she was. Uh, I know. Uh, after hundreds of interviews and reviewing all the evidence, detectives met the Westchester County District Attorney's Office. The decision was made to convene a grand jury and to go for a murder indictment against Lacey Spears. Yes. Over the next two weeks, the grand jury convened, hearing evidence from detectives, doctors, and several members of the fellowship community. Lacey was sent a grand jury notice inviting her to testify, uh, but through her attorney, she declined. Surprised, but I'm sure that was one of the worst moments of her life to have to decline. Yeah, you know the the attorney the was like, "I will me. not work with you if you go," and she's like, "Oh, please. this is my moment. It's my time to shine." <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so on June sixteenth, the grand jury indicted Lacey Spears for the second degree murder and first degree manslaughter of her son. Really? Yeah, um, and I didn't get into the details of why they chose second degree over first. Yeah. Um, but that's bullshit. <laughs> it's such crazy bullshit. Like mm-hmm. I, yeah, she'd been premeditating this since before he was even born. Well, not only that, but then she kept going back and trying again when it didn't work and exactly. he was recovering. Exactly. I don't know. That's weird. Um, maybe they just decided the, could be that the prosecution was S- certain they could get a second degree. Slam and dunk. Not, yeah. Not so sure. Yeah. Um, with a first, who knows? Not a lawyer. Well, and I think there's probably a certain amount of sympathy that you have to take into consideration with a mother, with a terminally ill son, like a chronically ill son, Mm -hmm. you know, and just in case the defense is able to paint that picture um, and garner that sympathy, uh, I guess that would probably be a pretty massive risk to take just in case. Yeah. Um, So these charges carried a maximum sentence of 25 years to life. So Lacey turned herself into authorities later that day and was taken into custody. She was held without bail while awaiting trial. Good. As both sides prepared for the trial, the prosecution decided not to bring any expert witness testimony or evidence that Lacey suffered from Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Mm -hmm. Uh, They believed they had a strong enough case without it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, The defense filed motions to suppress the most damning evidence against Lacey, including Garnet's medical history and her phone records. Uh, The judge dismissed these motions, allowing the prosecution to bring all evidence to trial. Thank God. But I wonder, too, if they avoided bringing up the Munchausen's by proxy because then the defense could latch onto an insanity plea or Mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Just let's just make her out to be a cold blooded murderer because that's essentially what she is. Yeah. Uh, a jury of six men and six women had been selected. Uh, the trial began February 3rd, 2015. The prosecution laid out all the evidence. Uh, Garnet's unexplained medical issues that only appeared when home with his mother. The feeding bags full of salt that Lacey asked a friend to remove from her home and throw away. The EEG video showing her bringing a healthy boy into the bathroom and a very sick child coming out. And the numerous lies she told. Mm-hmm. They said the G-tube was the murder weapon and Lacey was the murderer. Yep. Uh, the defense argued that there was no direct evidence against Lacey. No one ever saw her feed Garnet anything out of the ordinary, and she was a wonderful mother who deeply loved her child. They suggested his high sodium levels could be caused by diabetes. Uh, glucose was found in Garnet, Garnet's urine at one of his hospital visits soon before his death. Um Although glucose was found in his urine at one point, just once, the mm-hmm. glucose in his blood was normal. So Garnet yep. was not diabetic. Right. They spent most of the trial trying to plant reasonable doubt by questioning the medical staff's treatment of Garnet and blaming them for his death. 
Uh, they argued that Garnet was a sick child that died of, as a result of years of health issues and hospital error. In the book, they talk a lot. They interview the doctors and um, the one in particular who is at, on trial or not on trial. I'm sorry. <laughs> he is at the trial. He's yep. uh, testifying. And it's just so mad. He's so angry and uh, that they would, they, they tried so hard to save this child. Yeah. And that this, I can't imagine the defense no. coming at them and saying that it, they caused the error. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's really intense. No. Um, so after four weeks of testimony and two days of deliberation, Lacey Spears was found guilty of second degree murder. Good. After the verdict, Lacey continued to proclaim, proclaim her innocence saying she was shocked that the jury had found her guilty after all the evidence they'd heard at trial mm-hmm. um, on april 8th 2015 lacey spears was back in court for her sentencing hearing judge robert neary asked lacey if she had anything to say to the court before he passed his sentence and she said no sir hmm. Uh, Judge Neary then told her, quote, Miss Spears, in many respects, your crime is unfathomable in its cruelty. You give rise to many questions that I frankly don't have answers for. How can a mother ever treat her innocent child in such a callous, inhumane and calculating manner? Do you even realize the magnitude of your crime? Why didn't you seek help at some point? It was a series of planned and orchestrated actions that really shock the conscience. Instead of nurturing and protecting a beautiful child, you subjected him to five years of torment and pain. Anyone that saw the video trail of evidence of Garnet in the hospital, writhing in pain, unable to vomit, may never be able to erase those images from their mind. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, he continued, quote, One does not have to be a psychiatrist to realize that you suffer from mental illness known as Munchausen by proxy. I hope you, over the next few years, come to terms with your condition and are receptive to any treatment that may be available to you. My hope is that the publicity that Garnet's case has and will receive serves to put a spotlight on Munchausen by proxy syndrome and that the public becomes more aware of that condition and people do not shy away from reporting suspected abusers who exhibit symptoms of this illness. Man, he took the words right out of my mouth, Judge. I mean, it's perfectly Seriously, said. I That's... know. When I read that, I was like, there we are. I yeah. don't have to say any of this because nope. he nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, the judge then sentences Lacey to 20 years to life for the murder of her son, Garnet Spears. Good. The 32-year-old Lacey is currently serving her term at the Maximum Security Bedford Hills Correctional Facility in upstate New York. She will be eligible for for parole in 2034. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lacey complains that the inmates tease and taunt her, calling her, quote, baby killer and, quote, mother of the year. I think she's lucky that that's, if they're just teasing her and taunting Mm -hmm. her, she's getting away with a lot because I can't imagine that, you know, women in prison are take too kindly to Mm -hmm. a baby murderer. Right. Oh, and she also reports that kitchen staff at the prison would put extra packets of salt in her food as she would go down the meal line. Yeah. Um, and that is the incredibly fucked up story of the murder of Garnet Spears. Oh, that poor, poor, adorable, beautiful, sweet little boy. Mm-hmm. I know. I like to try to end it on light notes. Yeah. There is none. There's nothing here. No. She murdered her child for no reason, and there's nothing good that came out of that. Nope. She brought him into this world to torture him and murder him, and she succeeded in doing both. And it's just, I don't, I really just can't think of anything, like, scarier or more sad. Very few things that are scarier or more sad than a mother doing that to a child. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah. Which is why Munchausen by proxy is my favorite. <laughs> I, know. I just did this as a lesson to teach you that it shouldn't be your favorite. <laughs> it is interesting. No, it's so it's very interesting. It's so interesting. Really no, weird. like that's interesting, but it's also interesting to be so obsessed with true crime and then start a podcast about true crime. It really makes you question your mode, like your yeah. interests and your tastes uh, big time well, so i think i think that really it's uh munchausen's by proxy is so interesting because it's so out of the ordinary and because we collectively usually really love our mothers and yeah. they're the ones that we go to so 
when you have cases of this, it's fascinating because it's hard to understand. You don't, you know, there's, yeah, you can't wrap your brain around how this could possibly happen. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, that poor sweetheart, his, I looked at pictures of him last night and God, there's just not a cuter kid. He's like, no, he's adorable. Haley Joel Osment before he was in the hangover. <laughs> <laughs> Like way before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he's such a beautiful little boy. And she, you can tell, man, she's got those crazy eyes. Like mm-hmm. she looks like serious trouble. Yeah. Um, there's also, and I'm sure, you know, God, it's just clearly a troll, but there's a Facebook page in her defense, which yeah, is fascinating. It's mm-hmm. obviously just one person like who wants to stir shit up and stir shit up. She does because people mm-hmm. do not like Lacey. Um, no. But yeah. Well, there's so much out there. I mean, my goodness, this was like hot shit when it was happening, this, yeah. this case. Um, there's lots of shows and articles and books. And so if you want to go dive real deep uh, in the mind of Lacey Spears, it's available to you. Yeah. And go for it because I did, I did what I could and then I had to get out. <laughs> yeah. No, I I spent yeah. whatever, 15 minutes reading your reporting of it and was like, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's plenty. I can suddenly, I can barely breathe and <laughs> now I'm having a bad day. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's super important. Yeah. And I think to, you know, we've beaten this point home throughout this both episodes, but if you see something, say something. If you have the slightest like inclination that somebody's being hurt or abused, like actually do something and then follow through with it. Don't just be mm-hmm. like, Hey guys, so th- you know, pretty much probably Munchausen's got to mm-hmm. go. Like mm-hmm. so many people did, yeah. um, follow up, make sure that, that things are okay. You know, yeah. just follow up. If you're wrong, you might feel uncomfortable. You might be embarrassed. It'll pass. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, and that's all I have to say. About that. <laughs> that's all I have to say about that too. Uh, go cuddle, go cuddle your kids and your yes. night nieces and nephews and pugs in my case because i can't leave the house to go cuddle my nephews for a couple weeks <laughs> Just, um mm-hmm. and take care of each other uh yeah. you know it's a weird time but try to keep things in perspective do the best we can um take care of other people i mentioned this last last week last time but you know take care of the people who need it right now because lots of people are going to need lots of help and this is a great time to be our best selves and to be beautiful beautiful versions of ourselves and also just to you know i hope people are really checking in with their own suffering and it creates a more empathetic community and world moving forward because we've sort of lacked empathy in the past several years and i wish this wasn't happening to teach people how to to be better people but that's my hope it's my hope that this is going to create a lot more kindness and a lot more caring because we need it and we're in it together. We're absolutely in it together. We're going to be okay. And in the meantime, you get to get on your fucking couch, get to listen to podcasts, get to watch the Netflix. Mm-hmm. And yep, I made my husband Ryan go buy snacks at get, the store. Yes. <laughs> She's like, what are we out of? And I was like, we don't have snacks. Yeah, so it's critical at a time like the naughty ones. These. I need the naughty yes. snacks. <laughs> I need to take five bar now all of a sudden. <laughs> Oh, God, that sounds good. That sounds good. Probably not worth going out to the store for. Nope. But. Nope. And here's something that I invented yesterday. Uh, consider, if you have a little extra money, consider tipping your um, retail workers. I just, it just dawned on me as I was standing there in front of this terrified-looking, probably 21-year-old woman um, who was clearly stressed out and overwhelmed. And, you know, I'm not a wealthy person, but I, I'm going to be okay, I think, through all this. So I just handed her $10 and... Uh, I think it really made a difference in her day, you know? Mm-hmm. So, she's, I mean, these people are just putting themselves at tremendous risk to make sure yeah. that we can still get, I mean, take five bars aside, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking about the grocery store workers a lot. You I, know, we uh, talk about the the medical s- staff, which are obviously the heroes, but yeah. the people risking their health uh, to make sure we can buy food. Exactly. Are also, like, equally as important. I couldn't agree more. That's what I mean. So, yeah. you know, we're all tipping our wait staff extra and things like that but uh, yeah. i think it's really important and i'm sure these people are also getting their hours cut to put themselves mm-hmm. at risk you know to get make sure that we have bread and 
would say hand sanitizer, but that's a thing of the past. So <laughs> <laughs> bread and take five bars. Uh, so be yep. extra kind to them. And if you can throw a couple bucks their way, please consider doing so. Cause I think it'll go a long way at a time like this mm-hmm. and take care throw of each other. A couple reviews our way. I mean, we... yeah, guys, <laughs> was... you know, if you sit around, don't have anything to do. <laughs> Go on over. Show some love. Rate, review, subscribe. That's right. <laughs> and if if uh, you want to look at social media that's not causing going to cause you an existential crisis, uh, check us out at <laughs> They Will Kill on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, our website is They Will Kill, excuse me, They Will Kill dot com. And you can always email us. us. Whoa. You can also <laughs> <laughs> email us at they will kill podcast at gmail.com uh thanks as always to aj bergantz yep for our amazing music yep uh i st- honestly i still listen to it just I here do and there too. Through the day. <laughs> when i'm editing it i always go back through the end and it just makes it gets me pumped uh-huh. when i the part yeah. on our outro which is probably playing right now that music mm-hmm. under this part of the podcast is my favorite so thank you aj and remember um what's a nice thing what's a what to look oh, at say <laughs> easy <laughs> 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 there you go there you go love you guys <laughs> <laughs>